my name's Steve Fender. I'm from Fender's Fish Hatchery here in Ohio. We've been in business since the mid-50s. This stuff I've dealt with almost my whole life trying to keep it down to where we can get to our fish in our ponds. And, uh, and if you're a pond owner, you've got the same stuff in your pond. That's what I want to talk to you about in this video, how to control your vegetation, keep it down to where your pond doesn't become unswimmable, unfishable, and just a, a real big pain in the neck. This is a, considered a submerged root-in type of vegetation. We've got that, you have algae, which is a floating vegetation. Then you also have your emergent weeds, which are cattails. Then we also have another type of vegetation called duckweed and watermill that are surface vegetations that float on the top. And then the last and not the most dangerous is your algae blooms that give you water color. Now, clean ponds, new ponds will grow vegetation. Old ponds will grow it a whole lot better. The difference between the two is the amount of fertility in that body of water. As this stuff grows every year, then it dies and goes down to the bottom and rots up. It makes a lot of black muck, which the next year's generation of vegetation has more to eat, so it just grows that much better. After a number of years, your fertility rates get high enough that you start growing your duckweed and water meal, and then your blooms become issues. And also in the deep of the summer when we have a lot of hot weather here in Ohio, I get a lot of phone calls from customers that have fish kills and these fish kills are triggered by vegetation dying off and decaying very rapidly and the decaying process is robbing oxygen out of the pond and killing our fish. Ways to, ways to stop this and prevent this. Rooted in vegetation, what we like to do is use the white aimer. Here in Ohio, we're allowed to sell white aimer or they call them grass carp too. This is a fish that eats vegetation. We sell white aimers at about 11 to 12 inches in size. In one summer's time, they'll go from this size up to two pound, up to five pounds and roughly 20 to 24 inches in size. The first summer, they don't do a whole lot because they're too small to eat enough vegetation. The second summer, you'll start to notice an impact. You'll see vegetation free floating around like you might see floating here that's just being torn out by the white aimers. Then the third summer coming in, they should satisfy you. At that point, you should have good control with the white aimers for the next 10, 15, 16 years. I've had customers come back and tell me they've had aimers live to be over 20 years old. Now, when you put these guys in, like I say, the first three years, they do a good job. Then the next 10, 12, 13 years, they're going to help you. Towards the end of that, that 13, 14, 15 years, you want to start introducing some new aimers because as the old ones die off, then you're left holding the bag again and the vegetation comes back. Plus over these years your vegetation has gotten a little bit worse because of your fertility build up and your vegetation growing faster. Root end vegetation, algae, even cattails that the aimers can reach, they can control. Now before you run out and buy any white aimers, make sure if you're watching this in another state that they are legal in your part of the country. The state of Ohio legalized white aimers for sale for vegetation control in 1987. These fish we sell are all sterile females. They cannot reproduce. So we have a control way, a safe way to control vegetations without having to use herbicide. This is a very good natural alternative for controlling your vegetation. Now vegetation does provide cover. It does provide very oxygen. But the downside of it is it's not reliable in either situation. When you need it, it can be dying taking the oxygen out. And when the little fish are hatching out, your vegetation may not be dense enough yet. So instead of using vegetation to, to uh, make cover or make oxygen, put brush in, structure, natural structure, artificial structure, anything that you need to make cover for a little fish. It's permanent. You can put it where you want it. You don't have to worry about catching it with your hook because you know where it's at. And as far as oxygen, figure on using aeration if you need oxygen. Some sort of aeration is really pretty necessary in every body of water because you not only put oxygen into the water, you also circulate that water helping to keep the water cleaner and when you aerate the water, you knock your, all your nitrates and phosphates out that does promote the growth of your vegetation. So the aimers are going to control your root-end vegetation, your, your algae, and your cattails, the ones that can reach, of course. When we stock aimers, we stock at a ratio of anywhere from 8 to 12 per surface acre. You have to consider how much acreage you have it actually is being affected by vegetation. If you have a pond that isn't really too bad, you might get away with as little as 4 to the acre. If you have a pond that's really shallow and old and has a lot of problems, you may need upwards of 20 or better of the aimers. Add them very gradually until you get to the number of works so you don't overdo it because you don't want too many or they can become damaging to the pond. So keep that in mind when you stock. Also, check with your local 
Department of Natural Resources if you're in another state to make sure that they are legal in your part of the country so you don't bring something in that you could catch a fine or actually have them come in and kill your pond out just to get rid of a couple amherst. So check out first. Now your duckweed, watermill, and blooms I talked about earlier. These are vegetations that grow because your fertility levels have gotten out of hand. You can use the amherst. The problem of it is duckweed and watermill grows by reproducing and splitting off every 24 to 48 hours so it grows very rapidly and it's very small it's hard for them to eat it and control it so amers are not a really good choice for that it helps but they can't really control it as effectively like the problem with the duckweed and watermill is it grows on the surface only and it can get so thick and heavy on the surface that it can block the sunlight out to the underlying vegetation causing a fish kill causing decay to happen causing oxygen to come out of the water killing your fish so you want to watch if the duckweed doesn't get out of hand. Ways to control duckweed and watermill. Herbicides will work, very expensive. You're getting rid of the result of the problem. The problem is the fertility in the water. What we suggest that you do is aeration is real plus. When you aerate that water, you knock your nitrates and phosphates out. And the thing that really seals the deal in cleaning the pond up is using some sort of natural bacteria. There's a lot of different bacteria on the market. We sell one called Nature's Pond Conditioner from Condors and these are the same people we sell the windmills for. This bacteria, when you pour it into the water, goes down in, into the water, into the muck, lives down there, and eats that muck. Essentially what you're doing is you're treating your pond like a septic tank, in which it is a natural septic tank because all the fish, manure, dead fish, and vegetation, so it's the same thing. And like I say, you're treating it like a septic tank. You're using aeration and you're using bacteria to break the solid waste down to make the water clean again. So, this, depending on what kind of bacteria you use, go by the manufacturer's recommendations as far as how hard to use it. Every pond is going to be different, it's going to take a different amount. By using these bacteria, you're going to revert that fertility level down to where the vegetation doesn't grow as well. And ultimately, the whole goal is to make it so that the duckweed and watermill and the blooms can't grow. These algae blooms I talk about is what gives your water color. Water color comes from muddy water or from blooms that grow. If you have a bloom in there and it gets too heavy and dense, it will make a lot of oxygen until it dies. When it dies, it takes the oxygen out of the water. If it's dense enough in the pond, it can strip the oxygen out overnight, make it a fish kill. Typically, this happens in August in this part of the country because that's when we got our hottest temperatures. And right away, you got a fish kill. Using the bacteria, using aeration is the two things you can do to knock the fertility rates down to where the algae, your um, duckweed, and your water meal and your blooms can't grow so prolifically so they do not become a problem. You root in vegetation, your algae, cattails, you can use the white amers. There are a lot of chemicals in the market you can use. I always try to steer away from chemicals as much as I can because of the expense. We do sell a lot of fish to people that have used chemicals and killed their fish by using it wrong. Typically, they don't kill the fish directly with the chemical. They just use the chemical at the wrong time of the year, use it too heavy, they kill too much vegetation. Here again, cause an oxygen depletion by decaying plant life. That's the most common way we have people killing fish through using herbicides. So herbicides are very tricky, very expensive. Your safest, most natural way to do this is by using the white amers, the bacteria, and aeration. These things will help break this down to where you can keep a nice clean pond and you don't have these issues with catching your, your hook on vegetation, can't swim, just all kinds of things like that, and ultimately down the road fish kill. You can check us out on our website, www.fendersfishhatchery.com. Um, also on there, you'll find that I have a book that I sell that I built several years ago that revolves around pond management as far as vegetation control, fish stocking, um, environment control, vegetation control, aeration, everything is in this book. Check our website out. If you're interested in the book, uh, shoot us an email, give us a call. And anytime you have questions, you can reach me also. You look at our website, you'll find phone numbers for both the hatchery and myself. So call us and we'll help you out.